Thank you very much. And we're moving now to our last speaker, to Nicole Zia from University of Strasmeyer in uh, Osijek, Russia. Uh, and she's going to speak about uh, Croatian property law between tradition and transition, a revival of a Roman principle, uh, superficies solo uh, sedit. And uh, Nicole is an assistant professor at the Faculty of Law in Osijek, uh, where she teaches Roman private law. And she was awarded a doctoral research fellowship from Aust uh, Austrian Ministry of Science and Research. Um, she completed in 2012 uh, her postgraduate studies of civil law sciences at the Faculty of Law in Zagreb and defended her doctoral thesis. Um, Finus Nauticum, you have to help me with uh, uh, Latin, uh, as a precursor of uh, insurance law. And she worked at the Osiak County Court and was appointed a permanent court interpreter for German. German. Yeah, okay. They should have uh, shortened it. <laughs> okay, please. Thank you for such a nice introduction. Well, after these very interesting presentations of my panel colleagues, I saw that we have a lot in common. Since I have a microphone in my hands, I will cite the famous uh, frontman of Dire Straits, Mark Knopfler, say that we're, so to say, brothers in arms, because it seems that all post-socialist countries struggle with same problems. Well, after declaring its independence in 91, uh, in line with other Eastern European countries, Croatia tried to ensure political, economic and social transformation of communism. Well, in theory, the task was very simple. We had to assure um, the democratic uh, system, uh, then um, to convert from planned economy into market economy and uh, some kind of sure uh, responsive civil society. But, well, <laughs> in uh, real time, the, the situation was uh, not so easy and we uh, had a lot of uh, problems to struggle with. Among many challenges that lie upon a legal system in transition, uh, the transformation of regime affected to the greatest extent real property law and especially the traditional rule of uh, legal unity of uh, real estate, which originated in the Roman principle superficies sola cedit. Uh, well, as a result of this uh, political system, which deprived the private law of its economic basis, a paradox situation emerged, and it was described by a Hungarian professor so nicely. He said, we have a private law without private property. And that's really true. That's why my contribution today is focused on creation property law and its process of rebuilding this civil-style mode of legal thought by returning to its Roman legal foundation. Uh, the uh, superficie solo cedit principle is just one out of many examples of uh, classical Roman rules which are completely neglected during the communist era and then again elevated to the fundamental principle of property law. But abandonment of this Roman principle, which so to say served as a backbone of real property law, uh, left us with a lot of problems. First of all, we have now a compromised land register system and cadastre, then uh, complicated legal transactions of real property and of course lack of legal certainty. Well, to go back to Roman law, I suppose you're familiar with the uh, Roman principles, but just to give a short overview, um, the traditional legal rule, the surface goes with the ground that emerged actually from the debate on, of acquisition of ownership through accession is common to all European civil codes. And um, that means that everything permanently connected to the ground is considered a part of it and shares the same uh, legal status. Uh, this applies to plants and trees, uh, once they have taken root in other uh, owner's land, as well as to buildings which are built on uh, the land plot. Well, um, while it is evident that this principle uh, originated uh, in Law of Twelve Tables, uh, the first uh, time it was uh, clearly mentioned, uh, we can say that it's uh, in institutes of second century Juris Gaius. And um, concerning the reception of this rig uh, so to say, uh, regula juris in Croatian law, um, we can, it can be traced to Austrian civil code and the application of it. I have to say thanks to Miloš because he gave such a beautiful introduction and the whole background of accepting um, uh, this um, 
uh, old legal rules in uh, Croatia on, in the Yugoslavian system. Well, uh, Austrian civil code was introduced or came into force in 1812 and then was gradually introduced in Croatian territory since then. And um, although the application of its provisions were considered temporarily since uh, Croatian parliament passes its own provisions which were tailored to our situation, uh, because of political situation, World War I, we didn't manage to do that. And then uh, the provisions of Austrian civil code were bridged, so to say, in troubled waters during the times of transition. First of all, um, it assisted the transition from medieval feudal law into modern one. Then uh, it filled in the gaps during the regulations, uh, during the involvement in socialist legal circle. And finally, it helped Croatia uh, in the process of returning to the civil law roots and the European identity it once was a part of. Well, first of all, during the socialist times, uh, as a part of communist Yugoslavia, Croatia adopted a distinctive concept of collective property rights, which had important consequences on the development of legal system, um, gradually departing from the European legal tradition and taking over the essential features of socialist legal circle. Uh, contrary to the individualistic and liberal approach of Austrian civil code, uh, where the social relations were built from ground up by individuals themselves, uh, in order to achieve collective interest of the so-called working class, the authorities sought to shape the social order from above. And although uh, Yugoslav legal order distinguished itself from the Soviet model, in order to achieve this kind of socialism, socialism with a human face, or they said with a human character, it was still based on Marxist ideology, planned economy, and collectivistic worldview. In this legal system, a uh, central position was taken by uh, public law, suppressing and marginalizing private law, and it was the property law that suffered a major construct, uh, constructural and um, um, conceptual changes in this individualistic system of ownership that was based on only one type of ownership, a private one, and um, equality of legal objects and subject was abandoned. The result of this abandonment was segmentation of real property law by creating diverse forms of ownership, and uh, this resulted in breaking the rule of legal unity of real estate. What happened? Uh, we uh, had a legally separated um, property into two parts. So this happened. We have land in social ownership, and at the same time, we have building in private ownership, but not even the building remained uniform. Uh, Introducing the concept of law ownership, um, we have the building split into different parts uh, which are functionally uh, different into business premises, into offices, into floor um, parts. And uh, um, this um, remained a big problem till today in, um, because it uh, compromised the land register system and the uh, cadastre. Um, allowing the original acquisition of uh, floor ownership by adaptation, then annexes and additions to it, building even further complicated the legal situation of the real estate. Uh, following the shift from socialist paradigms into independency uh, in 1991, the Croatian constitution makers have started the reform of uh, property law and land register system with the adoption of new regulations which were based on traditional principles of real property law. Croatia adopted numerous federal Yugoslav laws, but not all private law areas were provided by valid regulations, so the Austrian civil code played once again a very important role in uh, modernizing the neglected and marginalized uh, parts of uh, property law. First of all, we had to do a transformation of social ownership into private ownership. And this required restitution. Nationalized and confiscated property was returned to its former owners. To uh, name just a couple of obstacles we encountered in this process. First of all, the property was returned to its former owners in extremely long processes. Then uh, we had very weak administrative capacities, unclear political will about this restitution, discrimination of uh, applicants, imprecise and postponed legal regulation, and so on. In order to re-establish the legal unity of real property, it was necessary to legally connect the building and uh, the land plot uh, it, uh, with its functionally independent parts. Based on the Act on Ownership and Other Real Rights enforced in 1997, 
the owner of the building became the owner of the previously socially owned land, including, of course, everything that was permanently connected to it. This is actually the reverse form of the Roman principle, superficie, so let's say it, because the, the surface does not go with the ground, but the ground <laughs> goes with the surface here. And at a normative level, it seemed that all the substantial changes were carried out and um, that all the most prerequisites were satisfied in order to modernize real property law, in order to ensure secure legal transactions, then encourage development of entrepreneurship, foreign investments and everything. But regardless of all these reforms after independence, the legal status of the property in the land registry is unfortunately still not in accordance with the actual situation of real estate. Uh, inability of legal transaction of socially owned real estate during the socialist time called the lack of interest of citizens to register the transfer of rights and ownership has for a long period of time been regarded as a mere formality. So that's why there are still numerous cases where we have um, an owner of the land uh, or a user of the socially owned land which is registered as such in um, our land registry and other person uh, owns the parts of a building. So so the situation is still not clear. And because of such disorganization, um, the deadlines of the application of the principles of confidence and accuracy of the land registry system has been postponed every two years. This situation is actually not surprising. If we consider systematic negligence of uh, the land register during the period of 45 years and discrepancies between the land register and cadastral system. So instead of conclusion, I made a short to-do list for Croatia. <laughs> Well, we have a lot to do, but um, let's start with a, a well-uniform and planned uh, legislation. I think that uh, Croatia needs a well-planned re reform with a long-term perspective rather than an action of revolutionary nature. In other terms, we, it's a complex process and we have to be patient. So, uh, because of insufficient coordination and non-systematic analysis of problems, as well as um, our intention to resolve the problems in a short period of time, um, actually, we came to incomplete provisions or mutually conflicting com co provisions which caused only uh, gaps in our legal system and um, uh, that had, of course, negative effect on uh, legal security. Then it is of a particular importance to harmonize the land registry with the cadastral system and the situation of real property in the land registry with the actual situation. Retraditionalization, sorry for uh, bad spelling here, uh, it's not a new concept. It's an old one. I wanted just to emphasize that despite some misconceptions that all um, former socialist countries resemble some kind of uh, juridical wasteland which have to be uh, built from ground up, I think that um, for many reasons such a perception, at least in case of Croatia, would be improper. Before the Second World War, uh, Croatian legal thought was progressing much in line with the Western uh, tradition and this regime change, as we saw earlier, does not have to mean a radical break with the old tradition. Uh, generally speaking, speaking, we have a long tradition of drawing upon Western models. So the principles of European tradition re-emerged through the application of Austrian civil code as an indirect legal source in more or less the same way as once was used commune, rather than by have uh, been mandatorily uh, imposed by the authorities. So then we have long-term change of mentality. Oh, this will be a tough one, because uh, legacy of socialist uh, legal reason and left us Croatians with a special passive mentality. I'm not sure if my colleague from Croatia and uh, Serbia agree, but I think that we can't expect to be passive and wait for the state to resolve all our problems, and that's what we're doing right now. So <laughs> we desperately need private initiative. And of course, last but not least, a particular significance in maintaining the traditional private legal culture goes to legal education, because Roman law, which was taught at all former Yugoslav universities, raised the cultural level of education and facilitated, of course, in this process of reintegration into European legal culture, especially today when legal history is seen or the subjects are seen as a necessary burden of the <laughs> legal studies. So don't bother, it's just the legal history. <laughs> 
yeah, we need to educate critical and human lawyers will contextualize legal problems and avoid the mechanical enforcement of rules because a lawyer, I think, with a firm ethical standards and critical approach is going to be only a legal technician and, of course, a blind bureaucrat. So I hope that I could give you a short overview because this is a long process um, and I'm open, of course, for all the questions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.